All right, so if you clicked on this video, I'm gonna assume that you are starting off with zero experience and no degree, and you wanna become a network engineer. In this series, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna be sharing everything that I know to help you become a network engineer. My goal by the end of this video is that you know the skills that you need to have to become a network engineer, kind of what a network engineer does, and ultimately if this is even the right path for you. All right, really quick before we get started and make sure that this video is for you and I'm not wasting your time, you're not wasting my time. This is specifically for people that are trying to become a network engineer and you're not trying to get that college degree and get into 50K debt like I did. This is specifically for you if you're trying to do that or whether you're trying to transition out of that retail job or some service industry job, or you're in the help desk and you're trying to become a network engineer. If that sounds anything like you, then lock in with me and let's get started. So what is a network engineer? In the most simplest terms, you're gonna be that person who makes sure that people and all their devices are using and all the devices on the network are staying connected securely and reliably. Your main objective or your main goal in your role as a network engineer is to make sure that all of these things are talking to each other. You'll be working with routers, switches, firewalls. You'll configure IP addresses and you'll set up VLANs and you'll be doing all other kind of things as far as documenting all of this kind of information that you're working with as well and working with end users as well as you'll be troubleshooting you'll have to troubleshoot if a network is running slow sometimes they'll say that their file transfers are slow or maybe it's internet connectivity to a specific website that might be slow you'll have to develop that skill of troubleshooting and really using some critical thinking to work with these end users and bring resolutions to their problems and make sure that all of these devices are staying connected. When working as a real network engineer, it's not just theory. Again, you're gonna be dealing with all different kind of people. Sometimes you're gonna to have to collaborate as well with other teams, such as people that are on the service team that are helping manage and maintain this infrastructure. You'll be working with physical tools and definitely you're gonna be using the command line. That's why it's important to have your lab practice with packet tracer and everything. You might start off on a help desk, but your goal is to level up into networking roles or cybersecurity roles or maybe a sysadmin role. Here's the full roadmap we'll cover in this series. So screenshot this, write it down, break it down, follow it step by step, and you're well on your way to becoming a network engineer. All right, so as with anything, you want to start off by learning the basics. Again, we're going to cover stuff that we've already covered, understanding IP addresses, DNS, protocols like that, DHCP, and of course the OSI model. Once you have that solid foundation, you need to work on getting that certification. So that's going to be either the CompTIA Network Plus or the CCNA. If you're going to be a network engineer and you're for sure about this, I just recommend going straight for the CCNA. The Network Plus, there's definitely nothing wrong with that if you're already studying it, but I just recommend going for the CCNA because that's what I've had my entire career and that's what's worked for me. Step number three is something that you definitely heard, building a home lab. Um, definitely you're gonna use free tools like Packet Tracer or GNS3, or if you have enough money, just go the cheap route. You can get some cheap equipment off of eBay, or Amazon maybe. The point here is building a home lab. We're not doing the labs that are in um, the certification studying. These are labs for you to experiment with. These are labs where you train your skills on building um, routing protocols like OSPF and troubleshooting them yourselves and coming up with this kind of scenarios and troubleshooting, looking at these different kinds of command and doing your research in these kind of experimental labs Maybe if you're working in the field, these are labs that you're throwing up and putting up mock labs of your real world lab networks. This is how you are gonna develop as a network engineer and really develop these skills and the experience if you don't have an opportunity 
to get that experience. Step number four, you wanna create a portfolio. Um, this is going beyond LinkedIn. You wanna start using platforms like GitHub. GitHub is just a way where you can showcase your skills and everything. You're gonna be using GitHub in the real world and if you can work on this skill, being able to push, pull, and commit data, um, that's gonna just put you that much further ahead and I actually am gonna to try to have help and get a special guest here to help collaborate with this skill that way, cause I'm building on it myself and I'm learning myself. So these are things that you can be doing as well cause I'm gonna be using it for cybersecurity and building my portfolio for that. But this works for network engineering, cybersecurity or whatever IT role that you're going after. GitHub is definitely gonna be a place where you want to get started if you haven't already. I have my personal GitHub already up there. If you've missed my videos, we've done Ansible and I've already put one project up there and there's gonna be many more to come. So I suggest that you get on this wave and you do the same thing as well. And step number five is just landing the job. I'm gonna do everything I can to help you out, putting you onto all of those little resume websites to help build your resume so that you can get in front of these interviewers. And then when you get those network engineer interview questions, I see that you guys are liking that a lot on the shorts. So we'll do a whole video on that in a longer format where we can just do some kind of role play where you see how an interview would play out like that. And then you want to target specific roles. We're going to go over all of that and how to search or how I search for specific job roles by titles like Net knock tech right for network operations center technician or network specialist or IT support specialist anything to get you in the realm of just landing that first IT job because that's the main thing once you land that first job you get that first salary or you get that first kind of paycheck you're going to understand how to maneuver in this industry and how to pretty much try to write your own check if you're not able to but after you get certified and get some experience, really be able to write your own check in this industry. Trust me, you don't need a degree. You just need a plan. And again, that's what this series is all designed and laid out to do. So if you're super serious about becoming a network engineer, make sure that you click on that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on that notification bell because episode two is the next important step to becoming a network engineer which is picking that right certification and, and getting rid of all those other certifications and not wasting your time. You are going to need a certification, but it's about knowing which one to get and going after that right one and really tackling it. I'll see you on that next video.